What's going on everybody? Welcome back to Retro of Aviation. Hope you guys have been fantastic day today. And today we have a very special video for you guys. Today we have the top 10 1 to 400 scale Gemini Jets releases video for you guys. I really hope you guys are excited for today's video and without any further delay, let's get into it. Alrighty everybody, today we're going to be taking a look at the 10 best 1 to 400 scale Gemini Jets releases from 1998 to today. I have to say, there have been some really neat releases from Gemini Jets in the last 24 years. This video will be a great opportunity to encompass all of those details and assess some of Gemini Jets defining eras over the years. As a disclaimer, we'll be using a subjective scale to rank these releases. This system will give us the best baseline standards possible. We'll be ranking 4 key elements, geography, mold, popularity, and quality. Geography Geography focuses on the different types of airlines and aircrafts released and where they are from. Mold is focused on what type of casting was used for the time. Casting will not necessarily be judged based upon the age of the mold, but rather how it compares to the real life aircraft. Popularity will encompass a general assessment of how well a model would have sold when it was initially released based on demand. Some models will sell better in certain regions than others, but each region has a varying customer base size. So we'll take a look at those and compare those to other regions to see if that model would have been popular. The last element that we will assess today will be the quality. Quality controls changed drastically over the years, therefore, we will assess this sector on how it would have been perceived from the time that model was released. So a model that was released earlier on on an older mold compared to the same model being released later on on a newer mold won't affect its score. Now that you guys know how we'll be ranking these releases, let's get into the releases everybody. Alrighty everybody, let's kick things off with number 10 on the list. July 2011. This is a larger release set, coming in at 11 models available. We have some Middle East and Asian models available to kick off our rankings, along with a plethora of North American aircraft to choose from, so geography earns 7 points. This release could have used some more variety here with the European or South American model perhaps, but nevertheless a good set of continents is represented here. Molds here are really good for the time. I like the Fokker 70 that was released here for America West. This mold looks really solid and I wish they would have used this mold more. Gem 9 Jets released some Fokker 70s and 100s in 2022, otherwise the mold choices are standard for the time, thus scoring 8 points. Popularity will be assessed on a lower scale here, despite models like the Southwest Airlines Boeing 737-500 being offered. There isn't any aircraft that stands out like a sore thumb with this release set outside of that, so only 6.5 points for the release in terms of the popularity. Finally, quality. This was, once again, really good for 2011 standards and I wish they would have continued this way. Nevertheless, quality is very solid with 8 points. That leaves July of 2011 coming in at 29.5 points out of a possible 40. Quite a solid score to get us started. Never a point only goes up from here everybody. Let's flash back to a release that's almost a decade old for our number 9 spot, April 2014. 2014 was a fun year for Gemini Jets releases as 2014 contained a wide variety of models, some of which I fondly remember during this time. In the April 2014 release, Gemini Jets released a good variety of airlines from different regions around the world, with a handful of Middle East models from Emirates, Etihad Cargo, and El Al, a European model in the KLM City Hopper, and an Australian model with Qantas Link, with a decent set of American American releases go along with this, I'll be giving Geography a 7 out of 10. It could have been higher if there was some more European or Austrian models released to balance it out perhaps, but nevertheless a great variety nonetheless. Molds for the time were very applicable, as we had the Airbus A319 which was very good for the time, the 787 was pretty decent too, and their wide bodies are also strong models in the Boeing 747-8 freighter and the Airbus A340-500. Overall, this category will be given a 7.5 out of 10. Popularity was definitely up there with this release. The Pan Am DC-6 was very popular with the retro collectors and the Qantas Link-8 for Australian collectors. The KLM City Hopper Ember Ear J-190 was also a pretty popular release as well. Ultimately, there is some great variety in all regions around the world and many of them sold well. Therefore, I'll be giving this sector an 8 out of 10. Finally, quality. Many of these models have fared decently well and didn't come broken, with paint issues or any other defects. I'll be giving this section a 7.5 out of 10. All in all, we have a total score of 30 out of a possible 40 points. Alrighty everybody, here's our number 8, November of 2007. To begin, this particular set is quite various in its geography with plenty of options for the Middle East, Europe, and North America. There's also a Canadian model in the Air Canada Jazz Bombardier CRJ-705, so with this and the rest of the applicable details, I'll be giving the geography 8.5 out of 10. Molds for the time were doing pretty good, with a mix of some Gemini Jets 2 molds from 2004 being used and some unique ones like the BAE-146 and the Hawker Siddeley Trident. The Airbus 
Blast A380 also gets featured and the mold at the time was really good. Overall, mold deserves an 8 out of 10 score. Popularity definitely has its high point. It's not hard to when you have 16 models in a release. The Northwest Orient Boeing 707 did numbers with retro collectors. The Delta 757 and the then new onwards and upwards livery sold well upon release and the pair of Airbus A319s with Spirit and US Airways. The Hawker Siddeley Tridents haven't proved to be as popular as some are still sitting around at retailers today. Therefore, I'll be giving this section a 7 out of 10. In addition, quality during this time was solid. No broken parts, no major defects that would have really hurt the release score. Although some molds could have been improved, this was still very applicable for the time and thus will get a 7.5 out of 10 points. This release will be walking away with a total score of 30.5 out of a possible 40 points. Not bad. Here we go with number 7 everybody, February of 2009. Not too shabby here with the geography as we have some European and Asian releases, an Emirates release, and a couple of US releases. A solid set of geographical locations here, so an 8.5 score is definitely applicable here. Molds fared well in this set. The IL-62 is an especially a nice addition to represent the Soviet era. They are quite fascinating and I hope to acquire one sometime. The Bristol Britannia 312 is also a unique mold here as it's only been released by Gemini Jets four times according to the Diecast Model Aircraft Database. This mold is very solid from the printing to the casting as a whole, so with that assessment and some of the more common aircraft types from Boeing and Airbus, I would say that 7.5 is very reasonable here. Popularity is definitely a mixed bag. The aforementioned LL62 and Britannia aren't necessarily the best selling models in the world, but are quite helpful in reference to the niche based collectors. The Southwest Illinois 1 here is definitely very popular in the US and is still hard to find and sought after by many collectors to this day. Factoring this in and some of the other releases, it's a safe bet to place 6.5 on popularity for this set. Quality is pretty standard for the time in that we don't have many molds that would be deemed poor or would come broken, but yet we could definitely improve upon for today's standards. For the time, however, these molds are pretty solid and would earn itself an 8.5 score. Our final score for the February of 2009 releases will be 31 out of 40 points. Tied for 5th place, we have the September 2018 release. This set scored on par with the upcoming release, February 2006, at 31.5 points. This release had plenty of North American releases along with some Australian, European, and Middle Eastern releases mixed in. Geography will score an easy 9 points here, boosted by the latter allowing for more variety. Molds are okay. Some have their issues but is balanced out with the slightly better ones, like the 737 MAX. 3 in total were released, 2 MAX 8 and 1 MAX 9. Some of the low points with this release do include the Airbus A321neo. It's a bit surprising that Gemini Jets hasn't made much of a change in terms of their QC with this mold. The only difference I've noticed has been the improved ground clearance on the engines on later releases. With the hit or miss molds here, it's a fair point to make a 7.5 score. Popularity has its high points here, with the aforementioned Maxes, Alaska Neo, and other applicable models like the Air Tui Nui Boeing 787, among others. The Porter Dash 8 Q400 is also a nice touch and helps elevate the popularity score, therefore, it will earn 8 points here. Quality is also about average, maybe some par with some releases. Some Southwest Maxes were reported to come broken with the wings detached, but apart from that, this release held up well. 7 points here. For our second 5th place release, we'll be cranking it back to February of 2006 to check out some of the best releases from Gemini Jets at the time. Various aircraft make up this set. I'm loving the variety for geography. We have an Oceanic and several European releases, and plenty for American collectors. As we don't have many roadblocks, thus a good representation for geography, I'll be ranking this at a 6. Molds here were stellar for the time. A Douglas DC-8, Boeing 727-200, Boeing 747-200, etc. Each of these molds look really good despite not having many of these retro planes apart from the Boeing 727. More to come on that though. This section earns a solid 8.5 points here. Popularity is through the roof for this release. One of the many highlights includes the Southwest Airlines Boeing 737-700 in the Maryland One paint scheme. I do have this model and I am happy to have this stunning model. This model is quite hard to find and is still very spot after despite the fact that Maryland One now wears the hardtail and has been released in various iterations from NG models. Some of the other releases from the US include the Delta Song Boeing 757-200, Brain of Cater Doubles DC-8, and TWA Western Boeing 727-200s. Rather jealous of these nowadays, but perhaps Gemini Jets can keep their retro groove going and get some of these re-released in the future. This section deserves a solid 8 points for that effort. Pretty good just based on the US releases alone. The European releases also contribute to the solid score across the pond. Quality is fantastic to say the least. These models don't have many issues and they're all relatively solid in all aspects.
aspects, so ranking this a 9 will be quite helpful. This release will be given a final score of 31.5 points out of a possible 40 points. Outstanding work. Alrighty everybody, number 4 will be an old school release, August 2003. This was right before I was born and is quite fascinating to crank it back this far. Jim Nijets' website was quite different during this time in reference to the design. Here's a screenshot of the website's UI, quite unique to say the least. How about those new molds in the Airbus A34600 and Airbus A33200? Here's the new release page, I do like the design for the time, it's very applicable, especially those prices, and it has a decent UI. The geography presented here in this set is pretty good, with a couple of US releases, both of them being retro for the time, some European, an African, South American, and an Oceanic release. Overall, geography is really good here, so I'll be ranking it out of 9. It's very applicable to see a release with almost every continent that has an airline. The only one we're missing is Asia here. Molds for the time were very solid and held up well compared to the competition. The score of 8 will prove well here. The popularity for this release was rather on the high end. The brand F and Delta releases proved well for retro collectors, and the EasyJet was a hot seller over in Europe. Overall, a ranking of 7 out of 10. Solid popularity earns the score here. Quality is very solid. Not many issues during this time with QC, so a nice 8 points will take the cake for this section. This release will be earning a total score of 32 out of a possible 40 points. Very fun release right here. Alrighty everybody, here we go into the podium rankings with number 3 on the list, January of 2008. With only 7 models being released, excluding the two Gemini Jet Select releases, this one the small releases will be covering in this video. However, I'll be factoring those two releases into these rankings, those being the Beta Cargo Boeing 707-320BC and the Kui Boeing 727-200. For those that don't know what Gemini Jet Select was, this was a product line that Gemini Jets won the 400 releases that were made on a smaller production run. During this time, Time, Gemini Jets made models with production runs of about 2,500 pieces. These production runs for Gemini Jets select models were smaller, closer to 500 to 1,000 pieces. Without any further delay, let's get into the rankings. The geography is quite awesome for this release, featuring models from every continent except Africa, so a great score of 9 will be placed here. Overall, the molds in this set are rather pleasing and are really solid like the Boeing 757-200 and Vickers Standards VC-10, so the mold deserves an 8 here. The popularity isn't necessarily super Super high on this release set compared to others, but models like the aforementioned 757s would have been popular in the US. Aircraft like the PIA Hawker Siddeley Trident and VC-10 weren't necessarily hot sellers based off trends with other releases on these molds. Nevertheless, this is still a solid 7.5 out of 10. Despite the lower popularity score, quality remains solid in 2008. Definitely some older releases here as quality was arguably way better despite the molds lacking some external details like antennas, but at the end of the day most people seem as they would rather have a nice, clean model than one that comes broken and or with loose or missing parts. Therefore, this quality category will receive 8 out of 10 points. Adding up our score gives us a total of 32.5 out of possible 40 points. This is a pleasant set for the time. Alrighty everybody, second to last on this list, number 2, June of 2006. 2006 seems like a fascinating year for Gemini Jets releases, and while I wasn't collecting models during this era, getting into the applicable details of these releases from this time frame has been quite fascinating. The June 2006 release contains a good amount of variety for geography, the St. Martin 3-pack set, a Japanese release, and an Asian release. I'll be ranking the geography a 9, mainly due to the unique locations of where these models originate. There are some major markets missing here like European and African ones, but the variety keeps the score at an elevated level. Molds here are very applicable. The CRJ mold was definitely better during this time with the nose landing gear, and has been shortened in more recent releases. Each of the other releases that I saw look applicable enough that the mold will score 8 here. Popularity is going to get another high score, as the St. Martin 3 pack was a hot seller upon release along with the Southwest Airlines Boeing. 737-700 in the Canyon Blue livery with the Southwest.com winglets. The other aircraft also did well in their respective markets, like the Thai and Vietnam releases, so overall popularity will be assessed at a score of 8.5. Quality is also definitely very applicable for the time. Solid molds as mentioned and nothing too significant in terms of defects, so a solid assessment will be placed here of an 8. Adding up these totals gives us a final score of 33.5 out of 40 points. What a great set for Gemini Jets at the time. 
now that we've looked at 9 out of the 10 releases for this list, I want to encompass some honorable mentions for you guys. I consider these releases to be pretty good even though they didn't make the final cut for this list. If you're interested in the second top 10 video, perhaps an NG Models top list or another brand, please let me know in the comments. In addition, feel free to let me know what you guys think about this video as well. This was a super fun video to make and I thoroughly enjoyed it. I learned so much about Gemini Jets and their previous releases and trends. This knowledge can definitely lead to more videos in the future. If you have any recommendations, feel free to leave a comment below. Nevertheless, let's dive into these honorable mentions. The first honorable mention is the March 2021 releases. Everybody knows this release for the infamous Delta Connection Bombier Nasir Day-900, a model which has been very highly sought after for many American collectors. This model sold out at every retailer you could think of, with many places limiting how many customers could order. The geography here isn't too stellar with only a pair of European offerings. As such, assessing a 50% or 5 points is the best we can do here for geography. Molds are... Not too stellar to say the least. The SAS Airbus A321neo and Frontier Airbus A321 entail common issues that are found with these molds, including oversized engines and nose defects. The rest of the molds are about average, so 6 points can be assessed here. And oh boy, popularity. This release set is only being featured here in the honorable mention section because of this category, and it's pretty self-explanatory too. The Delta CRJ900 says it all. 9 points here. Finally, quality. The Delta CRJ900 came with incorrectly placed main landing gear and horizontal stabilizers which posed the problem for those wanting to fix it, as you could risk damaging the model. Guilty. Overall, this score will be at a 6.5. In total, this release gets a 27 out of a possible 40 points. The second honorable mention encompasses September of 2011. This set contains a great amount of geography, with a Caribbean offering, a couple of Asian planes, and some Virgin Atlantic releases. This is about average for a Gemini Jets release in terms of the geography, but some other additional regions including South America, Africa, and perhaps some complementary European and American models would have been quite helpful here, so I'll be giving it 6 points. Molds here are relatively decent. The Eastern Convair 440 is quite a unique release for Gemini Jets, and molds here are pretty solid. Other applicable molds released in this set also are standard for the time, so it will get a respectable 7.5 points. Popularity isn't necessarily too exciting here as there's nothing absolutely outstanding that would have sold rather quickly. Perhaps the Heavies or the Eastern Convair or the Continental Express Saab 340, but apart from that, it's a run-of-the-mill sales for this release. However, a majority of these models are a bit hard to find nowadays and are sought out by collectors, so I do think that it's fair to assess a score of 8 here in this category. Quality is also standard for 2011. I don't see many issues with these releases nor do I see any coming broken. However, that Pan Am Boeing 747 SP is quite atrocious. What is, what is this crap? Good grief. I'm not sure what to think of this, and that alone will drop this category by a couple of points, so the quality will be scoring an unfortunate 6 here. That means that the September 2011 releases will be scoring a 27.5 out of possible 40 points. Not too bad for an honorable mention. Our third and final honorable mention will encompass a recent release from Gemini Jets in August of 2021. Many of us are quite familiar with this set, but several releases that were featured throughout this video are much older and are, can only be remembered by some of the OG collectors here on YouTube and throughout the community that will remember these releases off the top of their head. But this video has proved as an applicable opportunity to teach you guys about some Gemini Jets history. Anyways, let's start by discussing the geography. Nowadays, Gemini Jets leans towards more US based releases, but we do have an Australian aircraft here featuring the Alliance Ember Ear J 190 in the Air Force Centennial 2021 Special Livery. We also have one European release with the FedEx Feeder ATR 72F registered to Ireland, but a few US collectors have found this metal quite helpful despite the registration situation. With a lack of geography, this will only earn 7 points here. Still a solid showing though with 3 different continents, but it would have scored higher if there was more variety considering the large 10 model set. Molds definitely sit on the lower end, with the current Boeing 737-700 mold showing a lack of effort it would seem. However, the Boeing 747-400 flaps down mold is an outstanding addition and a nice touch in this release. There are some other minor nick picks that one could assess with this release, but they are pretty standard issues for current day Gemini Jets models in reference to the molds. So a 6.5 is unfortunately the best Gemini 
can do here. Popularity is very applicable for this set. The Southwest Lone Star 1 release sold quite well despite another iteration being produced by rival Panda models as a Waffle Collectible exclusive release was announced the very next day after Jim Knight Jets' August 2021 releases. As previously referenced, the FedEx ATR was quite popular in the US for those looking for one and didn't necessarily mind the Irish registration. Retro collectors had a field day with this set including popular throwbacks in the Eastern L188 Electra, Northwest Bone 77200 Orient livery, and TWA Bone 717200. It would have been nice to get some other non-US popular models in this set, however, this will earn a solid 7.5 out of 10 points. Most of the other models were worrisome in reference to the quality for this release, however, it didn't turn out as bad as one would have expected. Most of the models came in pretty good condition, minus the American Airlines Boeing 737 Astrojet livery, although NG models released suffered from similar faults. Nevertheless, the rest of the models fared okay and will earn 7.5 points in this category. That leaves this release with 28.5 out of a possible 40 points. That is all of our honorable mentions. Let's get into number one. And finally, we have number one for you guys. This release that tops the list with a final score of 35.5 out of 40 points is the infamous July-August 2014 release. Like I said previously, 2014 was a great year for Gemini Jets releases and is personally one of my favorite years out of the 2010s. This release contains a wide variety of geography with a nice balance of American, European, Asian, and Oceanic releases. Some applicable places are missing, but great variety for what's presented. Geography scores a nearly perfect 9.5 5 points. The molds during this time were starting to become a little mixed in terms of quality, but were still doing great during the time. The molds helped contribute to a solid release like the JetBlue Airbus A321, so an 8 is definitely appropriate for this section. Popularity is through the roof with this set as we have several US releases that storm through the community, like the Southwest Airlines Boeing 737-700 and Canyon Blue livery with winglets. This is also the last full flavor Canyon Blue livery that's been done to date. The aforementioned JetBlue Airbus A321 proved to be quite popular as well presented on the then solid A321 mold. The pair of Deltas were also quite popular too, especially the Boeing 717. Other releases like the Qantas A380 and KLM MD-11 were also quite popular, especially the latter as the model commemorated the retirement of the McDonnell Doubles MD-11 from all passenger service. A nearly perfect 9.5 score works for this category once again. Quality is also on par for the standards from this legendary era, as I don't see too many models vulnerable to common QC issues that we see nowadays, so a solid 9 points will be assessed here. This is a super fantastic set, and for this release, we'll be crowned at the top of the Gemini Deaths releases. Those are the top 10 best 1 to 400 scale Gemini Jets releases to date for you guys. This was a unique idea that I was interested in trying and I hope you guys enjoyed. Let me know if you guys would like to see a part 2 to this video featuring Gemini Jets and other brands in the near future. I'll definitely be doing some more research in the near future. How about a top 10 for Gemini Jets' worst releases? Who would like to see that? So with all that being said, that will do for today's video. Thank you guys so much for watching. I really hope you guys enjoyed today's video. My name is Redditor Aviation. I'd like to thank you guys so much for watching. Take it easy everybody. Stay safe. Trust the process. Do what you love and love what you do. My name is Redditor of Aviation. I want to thank you guys so much for watching, and I'll see you guys soon as Redditor of Aviation is signing off. <laughs> Any delays, <laughs> as you could risk damaging the multi. <laughs> I'll be ranking the geography of my. Uh, nine, sorry. <laughs> Let's go. That was so much better. Very pleased with that effort. That is an awesome effort right there. Next up, eight. Let's keep this going. Let's see if I can get this done before class starts. Good grief. I'm not sure what to think about this. And that alone will drop this category by a couple points. So this category that I kind of put, put that at the end as a blooper. That's, that was so funny. As Red Rave Aviation is signing off. Yes, let's go. Class time. See you soon.